Hello, everybody, and welcome back to our series on the Ten Commandments. Welcome back. Welcome, welcome. Go ahead and turn your Bible to Exodus 20. We're going to Exodus 20, verse 8 through 11. We're going to be in that scripture today. We're also going to be in Mark 2 a little bit later, so have a finger on that as well. If you are new to the series, welcome. I hope you learned something from this. I am Raven Knight, and I am very happy to be sharing this Bible study series with you guys. Uh, I want to share the Bible study series that I've been doing. It is my calling as a Christian to share my faith with others. And this series is diving through the Ten Commandments and how they apply to us in our day-to-day -day life and why these are more than just rules that God says, you know, you can't do this, you can't do that, you can't do this. How these rules aren't just lists of no's, but uh, instructions on how to have a free successful, godly society. And I do genuinely believe that if we can realign our nation to follow these rules, to follow these guidelines, then we can see a true change in our nation for the better. I really do believe that. If you want to hear some more Bible study series, I do have a few others. Uh, I go through my Roman series, and I also go through the life of David. i got a lot of series that I've been working on, and I'm really happy to be working on this one with you guys. So let's not waste any more time and get right into the good stuff. So, we have been through commandments one, two, three, and four. We're moving on to this one. I think you're going to like this one a lot. Um, because it has to do with something that I think all of us can appreciate. Rest. It has to do with rest, but not just rest. Physical and spiritual rest. We're talking about the Sabbath. Now, some of you who are Christian will probably say, okay, what does the Sabbath have to do with me? The Sabbath is a Jewish thing. Well, God still created the Sabbath for his children, for all of us. But what does that mean? We're going to talk about that today. So let's go ahead and talk about the Sabbath. If you, you should already be on there, Exodus chapter 20. Here we go. Exodus chapter 20, verse 8. Remember the Sabbath day by keeping it holy. Six days you shall labor and do all your work, but the seventh day is a Sabbath to the Lord your God. On it you shall not do any work, neither you nor your son or daughter, nor your male or female servant, nor your animals, nor any foreigner residing in your towns. For in six days the Lord made the heavens and the earth, the sea and all that is in them, but he rested on the seventh day. Therefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and made it holy. That is very clear cut, and in th this is one of the few commandments where God explains in great detail how he wants us to observe this. The Sabbath day is holy. The seventh day of the week is holy. Why? Because the Lord created the earth in six days and on the seventh he took a rest in the same way we can work six days, but on the seventh we take a rest. Now you might say, okay, Raven, I'm confused. Why does taking a day off matter to God? Well, there are a couple of reasons. The first reason is it's good for us. It is not good for you to work, 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 work nonstop, six day, seven days out of the week, 24 hours a day. We need rest. Our bodies require rest. If you look at someone who overworks, if you meet a workaholic, someone who just never stops working, notice how much more stressed they get, how tired they get, how worn down they get, how irritable they get. It leads to health problems. It makes them have higher blood pressure or lower blood pressure, depending. It can lead to weight loss or weight gain. It can lead to all kinds of issues that they have to face because they will not stop working. They can get sick from it. They can die from it. It is not good to work non-stop. Working is important, and the Bible has verses all about the importance of working. But you also need to know when to rest. But that's only part of it. There's another part of it. You weren't just supposed to not work on the Sabbath. There was another reason. You were supposed to meditate on God. You were supposed to spend that time fasting and understanding and learning from God. That's why Sunday, for so many businesses, is a day off. Because many people treat Sunday as a Sabbath day. A day to go to church and worship the Lord. Right? So I think that that's, an, that's a very important way to look at Sundays. Treat them as a day where we learn about God, where we understand God. That's why I release these videos on Sunday, because for the, some of you who can't make it to church, you might find meaning out of this. This might be your Sabbath meditation. You might need to take this time to really think and learn and study on God. And, G and God makes it clear, this is for your good. This is for your own good. You need to keep the Sabbath day holy. You need to rest. You, you should not work on this day. Now, some of you might say, okay, but you know, Raven, my job requires I work on Sunday. 
How do I handle that? Well, you know, I think that a lot of people get too caught up in this idea that the Sabbath has to be a specific day. I think to God, because Jesus will talk about that when we get to Mark. Okay, we'll get to Mark in just a minute and we'll talk all about this. But I think that when it comes to God, God does not care when you rest as long as you still rest and meditate on his word. As long as you still meditate and observe a day of rest, that's what matters. Whether it be Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, it doesn't matter. Pick a day. But make that day a day that you give yourself to God. Make that day a day where you don't work. Make that day a day where you take some time off to rest your body, rest your soul, and rest your mind, and give it to God. I think that, in and of itself, is a beautiful, beautiful thing to do. And it's an easy thing to do. It is. It, it could not be simpler. This isn't a hard rule. This is not a difficult rule to follow. Hey, this one day of the week, I don't want you to work. Oh, man. <laughs> I don't know how I'll be able to handle that. <laughs> However, we do need to talk about something else because I know that some of you are probably thinking, okay, Raven, cool rule, but how does that pertain to our day-to-day -day life? What does that have to do with us in a day-to-day -day life setting? How does that build a more free, stable society? Well, for one thing, like I said, it keeps you healthy. For another thing, it keeps your mind on God. I think one of the problems we have as a nation is we've truly lost sight of God's love for us. And I think we can fix that if we at least just take one day, one day out of the week for us to rest and come back to God. I think that that would be incredibly beneficial. And that's just me, maybe. But I think that'd be incredibly beneficial. But I also want to talk to you about the danger of the Sabbath. There is a danger to it. And we're going to see that in Mark 2. If you'll open up to Mark 2, verse 23. I'm going to see a small story here. This is from uh, when Jesus was with his disciples. I want you to see what happens here. Mark 2, 23. Here we go. One Sabbath, Jesus was going through the grain fields, and his disciples walked along. They began to pick some heads of grain. The Pharisees said to him, Look, why are they doing what is unlawful on the Sabbath? So, for those of you who don't understand what this is, essentially Jesus and his disciples are going through a grain field, as they're going, the disciples are hungry, so they're picking grain from the grain field. And the Pharisees see this and go, hey, they're working. They're working on the Sabbath. Why are they doing what's unlawful? They can't be working on the Sabbath. Now, there, therein lies the problem. The Pharisees had turned the rules of the Bible into... They, they, they'd forgotten the spirit of the rules, but only cared about the letter of the rules. It's unlawful to pick grain on the Sabbath. It's unlawful to do this on the Sabbath. Therefore, it's wrong to feed yourself like this when you're hungry. And Jesus points this out. Take a look at this. Um, verse 25. He answered, this is Jesus. Have you never read what David did when he and his companions were hungry and in need? In the days of Abiathar, the high priest, he entered the house of God and ate the consecrated bread, which is lawful only for priests to eat. And he also gave some to his companions. Then he said to them, the Sabbath was made for men, not man for the Sabbath. So the Son of Man is Lord even of the Sabbath. All right. What Jesus said here is powerful. He used the example of David when he and his men were hungry. They went into a they went into a, a into a temple and took the consecrated bread and ate it. You're not supposed to do that. Only the priests are allowed to do that. But God didn't punish David for doing it because God understood that these holy traditions are not more important to God than the love of God. See, here's the thing. Here's the underlying thing that comes from all of these commandments. Love. God makes all of these commandments out of love for us. He says, I love you, and these commandments are given to you because I love you, because I want what's best for you. I want what is best for you, my children. Do you think God is going to give us a commandment that restricts us from doing what we need to do when we're in need? There are lots of moments in the Bible where Jesus heals injured people or sick people on the Sabbath. And the Pharisees go, you can't heal people on the Sabbath. He's like, so I'm not supposed to help people in need because it's a holy day? What's better to do on the Sabbath? To do wrong or to do right? 
And this is why Jesus says in Mark and Mark twenty and Mark uh, twenty eight, sorry, Mark twenty seven, two twenty seven. But he said to them, "The Sabbath was made for man, not man for the Sabbath. The Sabbath was made for man, not man for the Sabbath. That's important." Because it's not just the Sabbath, it's the Ten Commandments. The Ten Commandments were made for man, not man for the Ten Commandments. One of the problems that we have is a lot of people who don't want to believe in Christ, who don't want to follow his word, look at the Ten Commandments and say these are outdated, very destructive, very controlling rules that tell us what we can and can't do. In fact, they tell us more what we can't do, so they're restrictive and wrong. They are outdated and wrong. But Jesus says clearly, these were made for you. Not for God's benefit. God didn't make them just so that he could have a laugh and go, ha let me make some rules you have to follow to please me. No, God made them for our benefit. Just look at what the Sabbath tells us to do. Take a day off. Take a day off. The, literally, there is a commandment in the Ten Commandments that says you need to take a day of rest. Do you really think God made all these commandments just to say, ha let me put one over on you, when there's literally one that says, I need you to take some time off, man. You need to rest. Why? Well, because I did. When I created the world, I took a day of rest. Just like you should. Spend that time meditating on me. Spend that time, you know, praying. Spend that time understanding me a bit more. Spend that time relaxing. Because I want to get closer to you, and it's a lot easier to get closer to you when you're not so busy you can't hear my voice. The Sabbath was made for man, not man for the Sabbath. And so follow, So the Son of Man is Lord even of the Sabbath. Man, I love this kind of stuff, man. I love this kind of stuff. In fact, in Mark 3, verse 4, is where then Jesus asked them, which is lawful on the Sabbath to do good or to do evil, to save life or to kill? Guys, I want to make this very clear. For those of you who are concerned about this Bible study series, who are concerned about the Ten Commandments, like, I'm not sure I want to prescribe myself to these rules. You know, they feel restrictive. They feel controlling. This, this part, this commandment should show you, more than anything, God loves you. He loves you so much. These rules, these commandments he's giving are not made to control you. God did not create you to say, all right, I've made you, now follow these rules. No, he made them because he said, I love you. I love you, and so that you can live the best life you can, here's some guidelines. Here's some guidelines. If you guys go to school or to work and you have rules that you have to follow at school or work and you think, man, I hate these rules. Have you ever stopped to think that maybe some of the rules that are there are there for your benefit, not just to control you? It's true. And that's the case with the Ten Commandments. But that's going to do it for this video today, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. This was a fun one to go through. Next time we're going into a commandment that, that again, I think some people think they understand. But they might need a little bit more. They they might need a little bit more time on it, if you know what I mean. Anyway, thank you guys so much. Really enjoyed this, and as always, I will see you in my next video. Take care.